Studies show that when Asian families move in, white families move out. Are they scared of the rigorous academic competition? Let's talk about it. Well, listen, I'm not saying that my kids don't want to compete. I just think they'd fare better in an environment that was a little bit more social, sporty, less robotic. Um, you guys, we got to talk about it. The article is titled Fear of Competition. Research shows that when Asian students move in, white families move out. They're talking about white flight 2.0. But this time, Andrew, it's not white flight for the reasons you might think. It's because the schools are getting, they just studying way too much math. All right. So we're going to get into it. Please uh, like that button, subscribe, and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Also check out Small Ass Sauce. Is this going to cause the other... Uh, non-Chinese chili oils to move out? I don't Tabasco, know. Tabasco, count your days. Um, you know, this is a really funny article. And articles like this have been written since 2005. In fact, in 1987, there was a whole Time Magazine uh, cover story done on like Asian American whiz kids. Mm -hmm. So this model minority stereotype has been around for, what, 30, 40, 50 years at yeah. this point? However, there was a brand new National Bureau of Economic Research study that offers a unusually granular view, basically gives you all the details and breaks it down. Mm, okay, so what are the interesting details here? Guys, essentially, to sum it up, right? Asians who very much value academic achievement move into these suburbs. They all go to the schools. They boost the level in the schools. It's very hard to compete in the schools so that the... You know, the white kids who don't value it as much, they got to move schools. Right, and oftentimes the white parents, they have money. They're opting to enroll their kids in a local private institution where they still probably get a good education, but it is not as rigorous and not as focused on STEM subjects because as you know, a lot of good high schools, they grade on a curve. Right. So right. that means it becomes very, very academically competitive at a very young age, of course. What people are not understanding is that in Asia, Andrew, oftentimes you got to test in high school already yeah. or you got to test in a middle school. People not right. really ready for that. Yeah. No, I mean, and also just growing up in an Asian family, I think it's almost like it's already said, like you get an A's, you're allowed maybe a B or two sometimes, but like essentially you got to get a, like academics is not supposed to be hard for an Asian, like uh, not all Asian families, but you know, the Asian families I'm talking about, it's well, almost they're, like- they're, We're probably yeah. thinking about a Chinese yeah. looking one. I well, don't know exactly what they are, but they look Chinese-y. Taiwanese. All yeah. right. <laughs> Um, so it basically said, Andrew, that there is historically large gaps in 2023 between Asian students and white African-American and Hispanic peers. 43% sure. uh, of all test takers scoring over 700 on the SAT math section in America are Asian, 43%. But Asians only make up 6% of the American population. Exactly. I mean, Asians, we all know. Guys, this is not news. Asians value academics. That is a seven extra of overrepresentation in the math portion of the SAT, yeah. by the way. Um, they also say that their enrollment in AP or international baccalaureate coursework is nearly double that of white people. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess is it different? What's interesting is that these are like wealthy white families, like wealthy white families that can afford to yes. send their kids to a private school instead of having them to compete in the public school arena with all the hardworking Asian kids. Right, and actually, actually one, one thing that this article neglects to mention, Andrew, is I've noticed some whitewashed rich Asians also removed their kid from the public schools wow. in Cupertino, in uh, Los Altos, nope. San Mateo, a Burlingame. We gotta reiterate, we are starting to hear that some Asian American families who do value academics, but not as much, they're starting to pull their kids out. These are like Chinese American families. Yes, I personally know some kids who grew up in an ultra uh, high tier public school and their parents still sent them to private school to be more well-rounded. So, so David, could this be in the future another white flight where all the Asian American families that don't want to compete with the super competitive Asians, they send their kids to the private school, but then... That's where the white kids thought they were safe, but then eventually a bunch more Asians are oh, going to go into the private point. school. You're talking about a whitewashed Asian flight. No, it's bottle. just like, it's just skipping over. It's just a... <laughs> By the way, guys, there are plenty of books written on this subject, Andrew. This is not something that is undocumented, No, right? it's not undocumented. Anyways, let's get in the comments section. All right, so real quick, I just want to show people some few a few memes I found on the internet of like, what is an upper middle class white person? You know, this is what the kids do. This is what the boys like. This is what the girls like. This is what the moms are like. This is what the dads are like. Andrew, typically the daughter will be like a history English double major, maybe went to Cornell. The son, you know, will go to UCLA and it's like an econ minor or something. 
something mm, like that. Mm, mm. Uh, hot <laughs> side major. So basically, um, contrast that with the starter pack from the upper middle class, first generation Asian American family. Pretty different. Obviously, there was a focus on Kumon, Elite One, Apex Academy, like mm. all like, you know, these, uh, you know, things, college prep work. Right, right, right. Yeah. So anyway, let's just get into the comment section real quick. This guy said, I was a teacher for 38 years, man. Some of the smartest students I ever met were Asian. And this person said, yeah, I was an English teacher in Asia. It actually really makes me worried for the white race in America because how can we compete? I simply saw these kids study literally for 12 hours a day. I don't know. I think we should consider before we allow millions more into our country whoa that was a really funny and then this guy said asian american kids sacrifice a lot in their early years they learn the pressures of achieving and trying to be the best they can be in academics academic achievement is not hereditary or genetic it's earned i i i i I believe this i think there is a lot of sacrifice um and it is earned and it's from the culture heavily yeah i mean if you look at Chinese culture, for example, I believe they invented the concept of the national exam and the concept of upward mobility being directly deti- uh, like, tied to national Like, you don't really realize how much you sacrificed or how much you didn't experience as an Asian American growing up until you talk to, like, <laughs> other non-Asian kids your age and you go through, like, what you did on the weekends and stuff. And I was like, dang, I was, like, studying on the weekends. I had to write, like, book reports during the summer. Or we went to the science center, you know, Mike. Right. Things like that. Um, Andrew, there was some negative comments from, I'm assuming, white people that said, hey, listen, man, Asians aren't born intelligent. They're just more focused on education. They got the backing and support of their parents. You ever seen them be good at football? Yeah. Well, well the mean- truth is... You very seldomly see an Asian kid who's super good at football. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it, it's rare, right? right? This guy said, in my professional life, I've found that Asians are good at memorizing things, but they lack understanding and creativity. Uh, you know, for example, for me, you know, that, that's not too impressive. You know, whatever work they did in school. I think the whole Do, do you tru- hear this criticism? No, a lot? I think the whole trope about Asians not being creative. I think that there was some merit at a time like decades ago but i i don't think it's as true anymore i really don't think so yeah i think like i think the newer newer school of asian parent even that is a tiger parent is doing the background work to address those blind spots a lot of creativity is like how you're raised to think and then how you think and how you're if you feel freedom then you're you're going to explore different things and explore your creativity yeah i think a lot of people can be creative somebody said perhaps the parents who are concerned about academic competition should reduce the time their kids spend on social media sports video games and smartphones huh how come the white parents don't want to compete huh and i believe this comment was from a white person yeah so i'm saying what why don't they is it do they know some way that the world works that the asian parents might not know about in terms of, you know how uh, once you get into higher levels of Fortune 100, Fortune 100, in your business, it could depend, uh, find the finance world. It's like as much about networking as much as how well you do yeah, the job. Yeah, I actually, it's not that if, you're, if your kid spends time on social media growing up, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be successful at something. Right. But I think that to study, to be strong in STEM, specifically the STEM things, you have to study those a lot. And those things are going to be all dominated by Asians in the future. I'm not saying creatively, sure, white people still going to be running the social media companies and maybe doing this and that. But I'm saying like all the hardcore STEM things that drive the world and the economies. Well, we were kind of thinking Timmy could just manage the Asian quants at work because he'd be so good at his managing muscles would be... 10 out of 10. Still got to spend time around them, yeah. Um, Andrew, there was a lot of white people defending themselves in the comment section being like, come on, man. It ain't because we're racist or because we don't want to compete, man. It's just because my house value in California went crazy. I could get a mansion in Vegas or Arizona or Texas. I just smart. I just Mm. took the opportunity to sell out at the Mm. peak. Yeah, I think there is various reasons, though. I, I mean... I think that some parents don't want their kids to compete. Some parents legitimately value sports that much. You know what I mean? Like, it's not always the fear of something rather than the love of something else. Right, You right. know what I mean? Like, you know, the 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 non less academic schools typically have better sports programs, specifically if you're talking about football or basketball right, generally, right? right? Um, somebody said, Asian culture values education unlike many other cultures. It values respect of family. It values respect for authority. You do not see Asian kids disrupt the teacher, and you certainly do not see Asian kids or their parents argue with the teachers. Mm. Um, there's some truth to this. Right. I wouldn't say it's 100 out of 100, but there's definitely some truth to this. Somebody said, you know, for me, we lived in a neighborhood 
Uh, but I chose not to send my kid to the Asian school in the neighborhood, even though I'm Asian, even though my wife wanted to, because I knew that our family wasn't as Asian as the other Asian families. Right. And I just felt bad for my daughter that, because my other option was to take her to some rural high school that has a low ranking and have her dominate there, but then she wasn't going to have a good social life. So I just let my daughter get like A minuses and Bs because I ultimately valued her happiness, but then it made me feel bad, like a bad Asian. Whoa, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I mean, Andrew, what do you think the truth is, right? You, you, get, you got these great public schools. Asians, typically, they don't want to pay for private school if they don't have to. I think Asians are much more likely to, like, buy a house or a condo in a hyper, you know, good-ranked public school area because they don't want to pay the 45 k per year per kid unless they really got it like that, even though some of them are opting to do that. But now the rich white kids, they're opting out. Who's right? Who's wrong? Or what does this study even mean? I just think that Asians got a plan. They got a vision. There's a strong culture around it. And they're still executing on that plan. And this is going to continue. Yes, a lot of Asian Americans, like my kids, I don't know if I can drill academics into my kids as much as even... Your, our parents uh, drilled our into parents us. Our parents drilled into us. I find it hard, but maybe I, they'll naturally grow to love it. I think I can help them understand the world better. You know, so I'm very American in that sense. So are, am I thinking more Americanized in that? Yeah, I am. I am. Do you think, I guess, let's just say for the parents who didn't want their kids to compete and, you know, they got Brad and Stacy or whatever at the private school that's more well-rounded but less STEM-centric and less rigorous academically, did they make the right choice? Like, are their kids ultimately going to become CEOs and things like that because they, even though they opted out of that rigorous test environment? I think that part of it is somewhat racial where it's not that I think the white parents are necessarily racist towards Asians, but they're thinking like, well, if all the other white kids are going to St. Joseph's and, and, my, kids, there, and right? my kid's white, it's okay if we send them there to be with those kids because you know their parents also have multi-million dollar connections and they're going to do this and this. So right. maybe that'll be like our school that we do things at versus like, Everybody trying to compete in the, the public. Right, Asian you're saying school. a fraternity sorority style rather yeah. than trying to out test everybody in the engineering department. Yeah, it's not, I don't think they necessarily are like, oh my gosh, Asians are bad. They're, they're, I'm racist against them. They're just like, they eat the they, stinky lunches. I know. They're, I think they're just like, no, I think my kid is going to thrive more at this private school, you know, and just he's going to be happier. He's going to make the connections that are more, you know, where our families are connected with their families, right. whatever. I think it, the success for the white families will ultimately be determined by how the world plays out. And I'm not sure how it's going to shake out if this like old dog sort of like system of uh, running things is going to perpetuate how much longer, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I'll tell you this, Andrew, all, I'll tell you what the Asian families do know. The Asian families know they don't have access to those old dog systems. Exactly. And they're, they're going to study their ass off. Yeah. And, because, and because that optionality is not there. To yeah. Go. Because I think the white families know that there's many, many, a thousand different ways to be successful in this world. But for the Asian family, they just know those four STEM S T E M or high level business. I'll tell you this, man, every tribe has a vision for how the micro fishbowl of youth is going to play out. And they're going to trade their kid like a free agent to different fishbowls until they find the fishbowl that they feel like their kid who is a goldfish is going to thrive in that fishbowl. For example, Andrew, I have a Samoan friend. His, he is obsessed with his kids being college football players. He knows that the NFL is like a little bit of a, you know, that's kind of crazy to put on your kids, but he wants his kids to play college football regardless. And that's what he based their whole youth around. But in that, they might learn great skills and go into construction. And people think there's a lot of tiers of construction. You can get rich in construction. If mm -hmm. you run your own construction company, you partner with somebody, you become a high level foreman or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So I guess what I'm saying is, there's so many pathways to success and every parent has a different for vision for how that plays out. Right. So anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think of this comment uh, of this article in the comment section below. Is this white flight 2.0? Do the parents not want to compete? Do the Asian parents have it wrong? Do the Asian parents need to send their kids to that well-rounded private school? It's an interesting discussion. I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. It probably varies family to family. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.